Hello everyone, Mark, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm working on the engine out of the Corvette. As I, as I said in a previous video, uh, I'm putting a four-speed in, an uh, aftermarket AC unit, vintage air, uh, Elderbrock fuel injection on it, and some other stuff, aluminum radiator, electric fans, all that kind of stuff. I want to get it up to date where it's, it'll be a real dependable, um, efficient vehicle when I get done with it because I'm planning on keeping it now. Uh, one of the things I thought when I bought this car, I, I assumed, and you know what that means, Anyway, the motor in the car I knew was not a numbers matching car, so it didn't come with the car when it was new. The car has 89,000 miles on it, but the odometer doesn't work. So I don't know how many miles on this car. It might be 389,000, it might be a half million, I don't know. Anyway, uh, since I know this motor didn't come in the car, I have no idea how many miles is on it. I assumed that had been rebuilt at some point because if you look at the, uh, here, I'll, I'll try to show you here. I've got the motor out of the car, I've got it on a stand, and that's a whole nother topic. But um, you can see here, it's got aftermarket intake uh, gaskets on it. It had an aftermarket pan gasket on it. It had an aftermarket uh, timing chain cover gasket on it. So I think at some point in its life, it has been rebuilt. Now, I don't know how many miles ago it was, but anyway, I pulled it out uh, for two reasons. One, because I'm putting the four-speed in it, I thought it'd make it easier to uh, to put the transmission in with the engine out. Plus, I wanted to clean up the engine and paint it. I wanted to clean up the engine compartment and paint it, make it look nice, get everything all tied off nice and neat in there, all the wires and, and vacuum lines and everything, and just make it a nice-looking car when it goes back together. So anyway, I'm kind of glad I pulled this motor out uh, for a couple of reasons. First one I was going to show you is, after I pulled the heads off, and let me get a flashlight here. I don't know how well this is going to show up in a flashlight, but when you, when you look at your valve stems and your exhaust ports, you can see how white those are in there with exhaust on them, okay? That's, that's what you want to see, okay? I just happen to notice in my number two cylinder, Look how oily that is. And again, I don't know how well that's showing up. Um, but that valve stem in there is oily. And that tells me that the valve stem seal was leaking. And for the most part, all my cylinders look pretty dry. I've got that number two cylinder. And I think it was the number seven cylinder, if I remember right. Yeah. You can see how it kind of looks a little, a little uh, dark and kind of uh, wet. So I know for sure I had at least two of those leaking and a couple others, like that one right there, if you can see right at the top of the stem, right before it goes into the valve guide, uh, it's a little bit wet. So that's telling me my valve's uh, stem seals are bad, okay? And Chevy, when they built these engines originally, they didn't put a valve stem seal in it per se, like, like what you, you might think of one. Uh, when I think of a valve stem seal, I think of this, okay? This is a valve stem seal. It slides down over the, the outside of the, the valve guide area and the valve runs inside of it. Now Chevy, in the earlier models, uh, I know I don't know how late they did it, but all they had was this little square O-ring that went in a groove at the top of the, the valve right below the keeper. And I guess they thought that would keep oil from running down the valve stem, and I, I guess it worked, I don't know. But anyway, uh, I decided to replace the valve stem seals, okay? So I, I, I pulled the pan off, because again, I, earlier I was talking about, in another video about, um, I got a little bit of an oil leak, I'm not sure if it's a pan, the rear seal, front seal, or the, the timing chain cover, so I'm replacing all those gaskets. I um, when I ran into this, I thought, well, I'll go ahead and replace the valve stem seals. And these, this is one of the old ones right here. And um, let me see, I don't know if I can show you here. I'm trying to find a place where I can set it, get my snack out of there. But, but you can see how brittle these are. See, look at that, it just, it just breaks right apart, okay? So the stuff is just, it's like rock hard and just, just breaks, it just crumbles. And the new ones, 
this is a new one you can see it's it's just it's real rubbery you know it's it's not hard at all so um my problem was i ordered the seals and when i got them this is what they look like so i went back to the parts store and i told them this and this isn't right I, I said what i need and i took one of my old ones with me they looked through all their catalogs they said they can't find them they don't know um, so originally i thought well maybe these were designed to go over the top of the old valve seat you just push them down over like that put the whole have the whole thing on the valve stem and it would work well it just bugged me because i knew that wasn't right but i thought that's my only resort and today i, I stopped by napa and they were actually able to find the right seals I needed. And what, what he told me is that back before uh, they started putting uh, the seals like this in them, that, that valve stem area was just rough cast. So if you want to put a valve seal in, that's what you use this one for because it was, it was flexible and it fit down over that casting area and then still seal on the stem. And uh, that would replace basically what the factory put in there. Um, so he said, because my valve stems are machined, it must have been machined at some time uh, when it was rebuilt because he said he didn't think the factory did that in that early model engine. So anyway, I found, um, I, went to, I went to the Napa store in Crystal River. They didn't have any, but he showed where they had 12 of these in stock in Inverness, Florida, which is about 20 miles from us. And the um, problem is I need 16, it's a V8. <laughs> you need two for each cylinder. So I went, ran to Inverness, I got the 12 I needed. I, while I was sitting in their parking lot, I got online with eBay and I found a place that had eight more. So I only needed four, but uh, th these were like $2.99 a piece. I was able to get eight for uh, $7.99. So, I figure what the heck I'll get them in case I screw one up putting it on or something. So anyway, I've got those coming. I can do two more cylinders. I've already done um, the right bank of the engine and um, I was just going to show you how I'm doing this. A um, couple of different ways to do this. If you have the head off the car, it's a lot easier because you don't have to worry about dropping the valve down into the cylinder. So what I did is um, to do it on the car, and I don't know if they sell these tools or not, but anyway, I made this up. I took an old spark plug, took the porcelain out of it, and I welded a, a, a air fitting into it. I hook an airline to it. I've got it set at about 45 PSI. And then I can, I can take my keepers off, take my valves out, and I don't worry, or the springs off, I don't worry about the valve falling down in the cylinder. Okay, so I wanna show you on this first one how I do that. Uh, basically, Put the air to it, and then if like if you got any air leaking out from the intake or the exhaust, see I've got a little bit of air coming out of there, so you might ha you might have to oops, not too far. You, you might have to kind of get between them to where. where it's not leaking air out of either one of them. And unfortunately, I got that real close where... Okay, let me, let me come back to this. I'm gonna, have to, I'm gonna have to crank it around and get it at the other end of the stroke on here so both these valves are closed, so hold on a second. Okay, so my plan was to show you how I'm changing these, these valve stem seals out. I went to go to the number one cylinder and I cranked it around where I thought these were both loose. I put air to it. I kept getting air out of the exhaust. I had to bump it back. I started getting air out of the intake. So I, I spun it around a couple times trying to find a spot where it wouldn't leak air. And um, to confirm my, my worst suspicion, I back this off completely. So right now, if I put that in there, that's, that valve should be closed 100%. If you notice, I put air to it. I don't know if you can hear that or not. But that is air coming out of the exhaust port. So that could be one of like three things. Could be a bent valve, could be a bad valve seat, could be a cracked head. Could be all three of them, I don't know. 
but now I have to pull the head off of this thing and see what I have. So this this has just turned into, into a major project. Uh, so anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and pull the head off and see what it looks like, and then I'll, I'll get back with you. I uh, I I ended this video at the last portion showing me uh, replacing the valve stem seals on my small block 350 of the vet, and I got I did the right bank first. So I did two four six eight cylinders. They went fine. Um, I decided to start videotaping on cylinder number one on the left bank and as you can see in the video I was having a hard time finding bottom of the stroke to where both valves be closed so I could put air to the cylinder to hold the valves in place so I could take the springs off and so I kept messing around messing around I couldn't get it to stop leaking through the exhaust valve no matter what I did so I decided to back the rocker arm off just to confirm my worst fears and sure enough I had a bad valve. Um, it was leaking. So I pulled the heads off. I found a machine shop in Inglis, Florida, and uh, I will put their information down below. Uh, it's called Car Parts. Uh, Ken, the owner, really great guy. Um, I took my heads to him, and while I was talking to him, I explained to him, I, this, I thought this motor had been rebuilt recently. It has been rebuilt, but you can tell it's, it's been a while. But once I got the heads off, the um, I checked the cylinders and there was no ridge at the top, you know, so there wasn't anywhere in the cylinder. So I don't think it had been driven much since it had been rebuilt. It just had been several years ago, I believe, uh, based on looking at how, how dirty inside the engine was and things like that. I, I, the reason I thought it had been rebuilt is it had all new gaskets on it, the pan, the, the timing chain cover, the intake. So I just, dummy me, I assumed it had just been rebuilt. Um, it ran good, except I did have a, a slight miss I just couldn't get rid of, and I think it was because the number one cylinder valve, the exhaust valve was leaking. Um, and there might have been some more, I don't know, but those are the, the one that I, I definitely know was bad. So anyway, <laughs> I took the heads to him. They're about 20 miles from here. And I got back home, and the more I thought about it, I thought, you know what? If I just put the heads back on it, and a month from now I try to trouble the engine, I'm going to kick myself. Well, I got it down this far, so I just I took the rest of the engine to him. I said, go through it, freshen up whatever it needs. And normally I put my own engines back together, but you know what? At this point, I just didn't want to deal with it. I, I told him just just to make sure, so it's guaranteed. I'm I'm having him put the whole engine back together, and it's supposed to be done today is Thursday the 16th, I think. 17th, March 17th, St. Patrick's Day. Anyway, I took it to him a little over a week ago and he thought he would have it done sometime this week. I haven't heard back from him yet, so I'm hoping I'll hear back from him today or tomorrow. Uh, I'd like to get finishing it up. So anyway, what I ended up doing after I found that out, um, I went ahead and I, I pulled the rest of the stuff out of the car that I needed to get out of the car just to make it easier for what I have to do. Uh, and let me let me show you here. Hello, I'm back. Uh, I hate to keep breaking this video up, but there's so much going on with this, this project on this car right now. Um, I got the engine back a couple days ago from the uh, machine shop. I've been working on it the last, well, since I got it back, I've been working on it pretty much every day. And I also um, kind of cleaned up the engine bay and got a coat of paint on it. I'm gonna let that dry and see what it looks like. I'm not real happy with it. It's, um, for some reason, there there's so much like, when they built the car, there was so much of that putty and stuff they put all over, and I tried to scrape as much off as I could, but it still doesn't look very good. But anyway, I'll show you the engine. Um, I've got it pretty much put all back together, um, except for the carburetor. Of course, I can't put the carburetor on until I get it back in the car because i got to lift it with the uh, engine lift plate that bolts where the carburetor goes. So this is what the engine looks like so far. It's actually hasn't turned out too bad. Um, the engine builder, I had him go ahead and put the, the long block together for me. And while he was doing it, he went and painted it for me. And he put one coat of orange on. And um, it, it had some bare spots in it and stuff like that. So when, the first thing I did when I got it back, I shot it with two more coats of, of orange. And I put three coats of clear on it so it's pretty shiny. Um, the pulleys are all done. Um, I went in and put the heat paint on the intake manifolds, baked them in my oven. Um, powder coated the uh, 
which you've seen in a previous video where I powder coated my valve covers. And I had a problem on, I bumped it and I, I, I didn't think it would chip off, but it chipped off. And I bought some spray wrinkle paint and put on there, but to me, it uh, it's not wrinkling. I, I don't know, I had to put it on with a little, uh, a little like a little Q-tip, and I don't know if maybe that screws it, uh, the process up when you do it that way. But I've got uh, I got everything bolted to it except for the power steering pump, which I can't put that on until I get it back in the car. It's still all plumbed in. And then I got the fuel pump. Once I get it in, I can just plug those back in. And of course, the exhaust manifolds. Uh, the next thing I have to do is because this was an automatic before, and now I'm putting a four-speed in it um, down in the uh, crankshaft here. Which I'll, I'll do a better video of this when I actually do it. But I got to press a uh, pilot bearing into the center of the crankshaft for the uh, input shaft on the transmission to, to line up off of. I gotta clean up these surfaces. I don't want any paint on those because I want my bell housing to fit tight against there. And uh, I gotta mount it on there and make sure it runs true with the center line in the crankshaft. I think it's gotta run within plus or minus five. I'll have to check that for sure. But anyway, that's real critical. If you don't have that lined up right, it could give you shifting problems, everything else uh, could wear out um, you know, bushings in the transmission and stuff and put a strain on your crank, all that kind of stuff. Okay, so I've got the engine and transmission back in the car. It's just sitting there right now. I don't have a bolted down or anything. I gotta hook up the exhaust, put the bolts in the motor mount and the rear transmission mount. Fits in there pretty good, which I guess it should. It came out of there. 